Hello there, my name is Tristan Pierce, owner of an online rare plant shop called Tristanical. Check it out when you're done with this video. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about 10 rare alocasia. This is a little different than the 10 rare philodendron video that I did in that I'm not ranking these. I'm just gonna give you 10 and then you can decide which one you like the most. Now, it looks like eight of these are jewel alocasias, which if you're not familiar with that, they're more compact. Honestly, they only get like this tall and they're all native to the island of Borneo. Those are typically the ones that are people's house plants just because they are smaller as compared to all the other ones that are huge and are more like landscaping plants. So let's just get right into this and start with the first one which is the Nebula Imperialis. Now if you see me looking down it's because I'm looking at the photos on my MacBook while I'm talking about them. Sad story with this one I actually owned one of these once and it rotted. It was devastating because I really liked it. I guess some characteristics could be the very dark undersides of the leaves and it's kind of like a grayish green blue kind of color to me. It's just like very like kind of in the category of slate. What makes this one different than a lot of other ones is that it's not really as textured in the patterning as you'll be able to see as we get further through this. There are some that have a lot more texture to them and this is currently very hard to find. Now I've said this before, I'll say it again. These may not be rare where you live, but they are for me, okay? They're rare where I live in the Pacific Northwest. So if they're not for you, cool. They're expensive here. <laughs> All right, the second one on the list is the Baginda Silver Dragon, which I don't have to show you a photo because I actually own one of these sitting right here. So here is a Silver Dragon. This is gorgeous. Mm, I'm so happy I own this plant. I've had it for quite a while and that's why it's as large as you can see here. Clearly the side faces the wall. What I really like about this one is it has red veining on the underside of the leaves here and the top really does have silvering. This looks very silver. Now the inner parts, especially in where the veining is, on camera it almost looks kind of like a blackish kind of color but it's just like a very very deep green. This shows you kind of what a mature jewel alocasia looks like. It's not very tall. They just don't take up a lot of horizontal or vertical space honestly which makes them perfect for the home. The next one, I'm convinced it doesn't exist until I actually Actually see it and it's called the Aslanii. Can we talk about pink? Like hello. Okay, one thing I will say about this, I don't like the way that the green just shows up in the leaves. It kind of like offsets it for me, but you can see compared to the silver dragon, the leaves honestly in most jewel, I, will, I always want to say jewel orchids, in jewel alocasias are, the leaves are about the same shape and the plants grow very similar. It's obviously just about coloring, leaf textures, things like that. Now this one, I have seen it floating around, but I have yet to see one in person. So that makes me want to believe that the photos are edited to make them look more pink, but I honestly can't confirm. But hopefully by putting that on your radar, you can figure that out for yourself. And if you have one, I would love for you to let me know. Comment down below, find my Instagram, send me a picture, whatever you do. I'd really like to see one that is like in more of a raw photo form because I really want to see like how that pink actually looks. Okay, next with wild colors is the Cupria Red Secret. Okay, this is insane in that the petioles are like perfect green and then the leaf back is just instantly like this dark burgundy purplish kind of color. And then you come to the leaf front and it also has that like almost black veining in it with I don't even, it's kind of like a coppery kind of red color. And ooh, this one is on like a personal wish list for me to have because I just think it's really beautiful and I love the contrast from exactly where the green petiole hits the back of the leaf. I just think that's insane and I need to have one in my life. This next one, I'm convinced looks like the Maharani that I'm gonna be talking about in a minute. It is the Mellow, also called the Rugosa. I don't know if those are different or if it's the same one 
they just go by two different names. But this one has very intense texturing, patterning on the front, very alien-like, kind of looks like an alien egg, if that's what an alien egg looks like, or my skin texture put under a microscope, or even like a fingerprint. There's just something about it I really find attractive with this alocasia. And it's another one of the ones that I'm like, okay, if I have a whole room that I can put alocasias in, I'm definitely getting one of these because I just think it's very beautiful. It could be a good statement piece as well if you have like a well-lit dining living area where you can just like put it on your side table or on the coffee table and just let it actually like span out like this. Mm, great. Okay, number six on the list is a borderline solid black leafed variety, which is called the Infernalis. Honestly, it does not look like it could possibly be this dark. And you can kind of see it might have to do with lighting conditions, but on another leaf you can see in this picture, it's like more of that coppery red color, but the other ones are like black, which I think is insane, very attractive for a plant. I have no idea if that's like a temperature and a lighting thing to try to get them that dark. I'm assuming so. I feel like if you give them high heat and a lot of light, the leaves will get darker. That's just my assumption. Not too sure because I've never personally seen one or owned one before. Number seven is the Maharani. The one that I said the Mellow Rugosa looked like. Okay, I have one, so I'm just gonna show you. This leaf looks so similar to that picture, does it not? I mean, obviously they're all native to the same island. Some of the varieties, there's probably just like subtle differences in them. Sorry, the focus is only gonna pull on my face. But the reason why I like the Maharani so much is because the backs of these leaves are so beautiful. So they're that red burgundy color, but the veins are green. And another thing that this one has that I don't think the other ones do is it'll get these red polka dots all over on the stem just like sporadically. I'm not really sure what that's about but I also have these in stock in my shop and they also have the spotting on the petiole so I am assuming it's just a characteristic of this plant but this one they get larger leaves as you can see compared to like the silver dragon and I've owned the Maharani for a few months as compared to two years if that gives you kind of any type of an idea on how they grow. I think this is a really great plant. It's not temperamental at all, honestly. So this one grows next to the silver dragon on my shelf here in the dining area. And the ones in the shop, in the grow room, they are all blooming right now. I think that's really cool. I thought about cutting the blooms off because they sacrifice the leaves for the blooms. I don't know what I should do about that. Let me know if you think I should cut them off. I'm kind of just leaving them. I'm not even pollinating them because I don't need more. <laughs> all right, number eight is the skin. Galprum. Now this one, you'll notice right away, another jewel alocasia, and it has a lot of the same texturing as a lot of these other ones. However, the leaf itself is very narrow and very long, and I have not really found a picture that shows what the exact underside of the leaf looks like, but it does look like the petiole starts out green and then starts eventually turning red as it gets closer to the leaf back, and I find these very attractive as well. I kind of like the narrow of this plant. It definitely like spices it up compared to the other ones. And I don't know anything about this plant, honestly. I even tried to research it. I've obviously heard about it or it wouldn't be in this video. But when I Google a lot of the pictures, it's just pictures of them growing in the ground. So I have a feeling they just haven't been like commercialized yet, but they're honestly beautiful. And if I can get my hands on one, I'm getting one. You should do the same. Okay, the next two are not jewel alocasia, which means these get very large. They're probably supposed to be in someone's garden, but you could grow them in your house. They're just gonna take up a lot of space. Okay, I'm having a hard time figuring out exactly what this one is because I've gotten a lot of different, like contradicting answers on this. So the one in the photo is supposed to be the Longlobia grandis, formerly known as Loei, and this is a alocasia native to China. It could also be one called the Watts, Soniana, and I don't understand the difference. I even tried Googling the Longlobia grandis versus Longlobia what's 
Soniana, I have a hard time saying these. The pictures are exactly the same. So I think they're the same plant or they're just being mis ID'd. Honestly, let me know in the comments if you know exactly what this plant is because I think it's beautiful. This one gives me like Anthurium vibes, which I'm happy about because Anthurium are really temperamental and Alocasia are not in my own opinion. But other than that, I think this one is a great choice if you have like a big open window space where you just want like one statement plant sitting there with some smaller ones around it maybe. But obviously I've never seen one in person so I don't understand how big these are supposed to be. I can see in the background of the photo there's a Monstera Thai constellation and the leaves look microscopic compared to this. So I have a feeling this would just be as big as you and take up the entire room which mm, love that. All right coming in at number 10 which is the final plant is the Macroriza variegata. I think I got better at saying that from the last time that I talked about it. Okay, this one had some issues on the trending rare plants for 2022 video. The thumbnail photo is evidently a variegated Friedek, which I didn't even know existed. So thank you to that person that commented if you're watching this. So this one I actually know is that plant because I actually own one, but it's recovering. So all the leaves look like garbage right now, which as they do when you import plants, but this is so beautiful to me. Now, a lot of the time, especially with alocasia, variegation ruins them. I'm really considering doing a video just talking about variegated alocasia because I know of a lot of them. There are so many and I think they all look like garbage to be honest. I think they look gross. I think they look sick and they're selling for hundreds and hundreds of dollars and I don't understand it. However, However, this one I think is like the perfect scenario for variegation, especially with the way it goes up the stems with the vertical stripes. And I think it's just like very, it has good feng shui with the variegation on the leaf. And I just found that so attractive. That's why I bought one for myself. So hopefully if it recovers, I'll be able to show it to you so you can get a unedited version of what the plant looks like. This one is also not a jewel alocasia, so it will probably get very large. I'm assuming like one to three feet tall. It could get bigger. A car just floored it up the road. But anyway, yeah, that's the only one that's variegated on this list, but I will be making a video. I've decided, I've decided while I was talking, I will be making the video talking about variegated alocasia. So you can hopefully understand why I think they're so gross because I don't know, it's just sporadic, it's not cute. Alrighty, and that concludes top 10 rare alocasia. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>